Hello everyone. In today's video, I want to cover how can you measure an organization's data and analytics maturity? This is a very important question and I had to do that in several events and I think you'll have to do it as well. So you'll have to do it if you are moving roles within the organizations. So I found that when I moved functions across the same organization, I had to measure how mature they are from a data and analytics perspective. The other thing is if you're moving across organizations, that is also important because if you're moving to a new organization, how can you measure their data and analytics maturity? How can you say how advanced they are, how what they need improvement in and, and, and actually can you suggest change and how will they be able to take this take this change on board? Um, and also if you're doing consulting. So when I had to do some consulting jobs for um, uh, for um, small and medium organizations and non-for-profit, that was very important because if I'm supporting a non-for-profit to actually create their own data analytics uh, strategy, I need to understand the level of their data analytics maturity. Let me go through the three main things that I take into account when I want to measure an organization's data and analytics maturity. The first thing that's for me really important is the organization's culture. How culturally mature it is. And when I say culture, it's more of the technology culture. So is the technology culture driven? So uh, things like do they, how advanced they are from a technology perspective? Do they embrace technology? Um, are they aware of what is in the market in terms of products or not? Do they want to try things? Do they want to be the first to try or are they more of led and you know, and obviously you can see that in different uh, industries, uh, especially with technology culture, but equally you'll find different organizations within the same, um, within the same industry, uh, kind of have a different appetite when it comes to technology. So that for me, the first aspect. And when I say technology culture, I also look at their um, data and analytics organization structure. And that's a video that I'll post a link to uh, so that you can go and, and, and understand it better. Um, for a digital and a digital culture and looking at their data and analytics uh, organization structure, it's basically saying or seeing if they are centralized or decentralized, like do they have a central of excellence where everything is led from there? Um, or are they completely decentralized? Like they don't have a central of excellence and analytics is kind of every function has its own analytics central of excellence and they're quite advanced. Or are they somewhere in the middle where they have an analytics central of excellence, but equally have an analytics, like a sub analytics central of excellence in each of the functions, just the hybrid model. And obviously the centralized is the, the maturity is, is less because everything is controlled. While if a company has analytics everywhere and it's very analytics um, and data driven, um, that's very, you know, that's the complete opposite and it sits on the other side of the spectrum. And this is the decentralized hybrid again is in the model is in the middle. Sorry. Um, so this is really what I look at and I have seen, um, to be honest, even the culture or the technology culture, if you're moving within the same organization, that can be very different. So you can move from a function like marketing or purchasing to, you know, finance, and you'll feel this change. And I, I, I've seen that because you find a function that is very analytics driven or, you know, things like the marketing when they're like, they embrace it, everything is online a bit. In, and you might compare it to another function um, that is still embracing the data and analytics technology um, or purchasing when you have a supply chain, for example, analytics, um, and you might find some differences. So this is the first thing that really is important, which is 
looking at the technology culture of the organization or the function. The second thing that I do straight away once I start a role or start a project is looking at their data and analytics skill set. And by skill set, I mean the employees. So people within the organization, those are, for me, the people are really the core thing within the organization. They're quite a big asset to the organization. And to be able to go into a data and analytics, you know, to, to create in order to create a data and analytics strategy, you can't create that without the people that are there. As much as you want to hire from outside, um, it's good to get new blood, but to be honest, the people that are core and know the business inside out, they're so important. So the second bit is actually measuring the digital um, or the data analytics skill set within the team and understand, okay, do we need to maybe create training? Do we need to upskill our teams? Because those are the assets. So how can we bring them up and improve and increase the, um, the, the skill set and improve it? So how can we improve the skill set? So this is the second thing I look at. And in that, there's so many things you can do. You can, and I can create a whole video on that, on actually how to um, embed the data analytics skill set within the functions, creating you know sessions and understanding the skill set and so on. But it's really important to understand where they sit. Is it a mature organization where people can actually understand data analytics tools? They can do things on, the things are in the cloud and they can just use SQL to, you know, create their queries um, and put visualizations. Whether the cloud is on um, Google or Amazon or Azure, technology agnostic, whatever tool they're using, uh, and equally visualization, it's the same, whether it's Tableau or Power BI or whatever, you have some tools out there. Um, so technology agnostic, whatever the tool it is they are using, but they have to, they understand this, the process and understand data and analytics. Um, this is really important. And with that, you can actually start creating you know, learning sessions, whether they are lunch and learn, whether they are, you know, courses and actually, you know, having incentives to do that. So many things to do that within the, uh, to improve your skill set. The third thing that I look into when I want to measure the data and analytics maturity in a, in an organization or a function or in a, in a situation that I am in is understand the data governance of that organization. So with data governance, I understand the data collaborations within the function. Are they open to sharing or not? Do they have the right organization, like applying GDPR as well, and they are applying, they understand the privacy and the importance of data governance, the fields that are there. Do they understand where the, where, do they understand where the fields are? Who owns the fields? Uh, so governing it, the lineage, obviously, cross-functional. There's so many things in data governance. Um, but I think this is the third thing that for me, from maturity perspective, I look at. So again, the three things that I would suggest that you look at if you want to understand the digital or data analytics maturity in an organization is look at the technology culture, look at the data and analytics skill set, and the level of maturity it has. And the third is looking at the data governance. Does the organization understand the data governance or not? So that's a wrap up. I think that's the video that I'm sharing today uh, based on a question that I got asked about understanding the maturity level and what things to look, in, to look at when you're measuring an, um, an organization's data and analytics maturity level. Um, I will share more um, about each of those in subsequent videos but for the time being let me know your thoughts let me know if you've actually assessed organizations before uh, share with me your experience let me know if you have any questions and also let me know what what you would like me to share um, in the next videos and uh, see you in the next video